Welcome to the Fantasy 40 Podcast with your host, John Dabari. I mean, I can beat the shit out of Hollywood Brown if you'd like. Matt Walker. Put the DK Metcalf of running back. And Andrew Burke. I love Hakeem Butler, actually. I'm sorry. He's starting to grow on me. Remember to like, rate, subscribe on Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spotify. Follow the guys on Twitter at the Fantasy 40. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy 40 Podcast. We are back. Myself, Andrew Burke, John Dabari, and Matt Walker. Uh, today we're going to be bringing you the all 32. We're going AFC West this time. But uh, before we jump in real quick, we'd like to thank our partners over at the Full Time Fantasy Network. Big things going over there. We're now affiliates with Sports Illustrated. Uh, plenty of, you know, what are they doing? Mock drafts, write-ups, all that stuff. And uh, plenty of podcasts as well. Uh, I already know how you guys are doing. Everybody good? Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, hey, Sports Hello. Illustrated. Hit us up, you know, give us a sponsorship. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they don't even know, man. I'll go door to door selling magazines, so it's still a thing, but uh, uh, that, that's for you. One of them football helmets, you know what I'm saying? Right, I hear you. I pick up what you're phone. Phone. want pick the up. shoe phone. <laughs> shoe phone, those are like a collector's <laughs> items now for sure. But uh, we're gonna jump right into things just because we've been in the AFC for our first four of the all 32 and we're ready to get out of here. Uh, it's, it's been ugly. It's been brutal, but uh, I think we close it down with the more, I guess, entertaining division. So I'm glad we saved the West for last, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and start our 10 minute timer and let's get things rolling. We we're going to start with the Denver Broncos. Uh, we'll start there. They had a lot of picks uh, this year. They didn't really go to the defensive side of the ball. Walker, where'd they go? Well, they went with Noah Fant on offense with their first round pick after trading back. And then they bolstered the offensive line before they took Drew Locke in the second round. So it was someone that a lot of people, Drew Locke had mocked to Denver in the first round that they got with their later second round pick. Um, it's about all they did on offense. They did get Jawan Winfrey late, but he's uh, not of consequence. So pretty much here talking about Noah Fant, who some people had as their tight end one in this draft. I was not one of them. And then Drew Locke, who is – an interesting case because I don't know that anyone believes in Joe Flacco. So Drew Locke will be starting sooner rather than later. Um, yeah, yeah. Those are my three uh, takes on uh, Drew Locke. I mean, I saw I saw the dude in the uh, in the green room. He did not look happy. It reminded me of uh, what was that draft day when the quarterback wasn't getting taken? Aaron Rodgers. <clears throat> oh, say it reminds me of Jay Cutler. Uh, that's Denver true too. Park. John, you got any other <laughs> big guy with small hands? If you watch, it's always sunny. It reminds me of Charlie's uncle. Uh-huh. I was going to say the, ham, the Burger King commercial guy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like Fant. I, I think long term he's going to be fine. They are they, they are decimated it with injuries so far at tight end this year. So it'll be interesting to see how he comes along because he's going to get thrown on the field. They have no choice at this point. People are just getting all banged up there at tight end. All right, let's move on to the free agents. We uh, all know we've talked about him earlier, but uh, Joe Flacco, he uh, he was one. Who else did they bring in? Theo Riddick, a late addition. He is injured, isn't he? He, he is injured. broke his shoulder, which oh, I think shit. is probably a bad thing for a running back. You know, all the worst. <laughs> name only, but they said he'll be back relatively like by early in the season. I just don't know how much impact he's going to have, but yeah, those are the two notable ads on the offensive side. All right. Well, let's uh, get into the good stuff. Let's go to the sleepers. Uh, this first one, Walker, um, I'm on, I'm on board. Uh, I've been on board with, I think two or three of your previous sleepers in past episodes, but I like this one probably the most. Yeah. I'm a Deshaun Hamilton fan. Um, uh, he's even creeping past Cortland Sutton for me. Um, at this point, being on the same team and being able to evaluate them, I'm just kind of, you know, fading Sutton a little bit at this point in time. Dejon Hamilton is going to be the volume receiver in this offense. I'm not going to trust that Emmanuel Sanders, although he, he looks good in all those nice little uh, hype videos that he's ever going to really get back to the form that he had before. And with him out of the way, Dejon Hamilton is just going to eat 
and get volume in this offense. I don't think the Broncos are going to be a very good team this year, so they're going to have to throw it a lot. And I think Flacco and then by end of season, Drew Locke will be looking Deshaun Hamilton's way quite often. So I think Deshaun Hamilton in PPR has sneaky wide receiver two slash three upside. I think he's a flexy type guy week in and week out in PPR leagues. Yeah, I was going to say uh, we were talking about uh, in the past episode that wide receiver cliff. I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, Sanders, is his toes are just on the edge of that cliff ready to get – someone's just going to come up and push him off of it. So <laughs> and I, I think it, it, it might be Deshaun Hamilton. I mean, he didn't get many reps. He was kind of banged up in the early uh, – training camps but uh he was on the field for a few plays in that first game i'm hoping to see a little more john i'm going super deep uh i just mentioned the injuries they've had at tight end i think jake butt finally has a productive season for fantasy uh you know competing just with fan Kuerman is a little hurt too but i think but if he can stay healthy just by attrition because everyone else is getting hurt but may end up being the tight end to own this year yeah, one thing that did stand out to me because I did catch uh, a lot of that Denver game actually is uh, Fant is athletic, but he just he looks a little confused. They say the tight end position, like you guys always say, you know, takes three years to develop. But I mean, he made a few catches, but he just it's not like he's in Iowa anymore, I guess is what I'm saying. He's not breaking away from guys and stuff like that. So just a situation to monitor, I guess. We get- yeah, I mean, listen, he's he's a tight end by designation and physical dimensions only. I mean, Noah Fan is a big slot receiver. <laughs> that, you know, they're going to get, you know, packages put together for him. So he, he's going to have an impact early on. He has to. But uh, John's just not giving up on butt, man. I'll give him credit. That's another dude that, I mean, he just gets injured every year as well. I'm not going to place any stock in him holding down that top spot. Torn his ACL three times. Oh, yeah. shit. How many ACLs do you have? He's going to be the first guy to play on a pig He's leg. <laughs> Two. <laughs> uh, let's go to the breakouts. <laughs> We're going to the breakouts. Uh, John? I went to, uh, I actually went to the defensive side <laughs> of the ball. I, with Vic Fangio coming in, he's got a history of having productive defenses, productive linebackers, uh, somebody they drafted out of Iowa two years ago. Josie Jewell is now the starting uh, middle linebacker for this team. And in Fangio's defense, they are asked to do a lot in coverage, doing a lot against the run, sometimes uh getting after the quarterback. I think Jewel is a huge breakout candidate on the IDP side. I love him this year. Rolls Royce Freeman is breaking out this year. He is the back to own in Denver, in my opinion. I think Philip Lindsay, although his story is phenomenal, he's a tremendous individual by all accounts. I think he was a one and done in this league. We've seen it all the time. I just don't think he is built for a workload. Royce Freeman is indeed built for a workload and we'll assume i think the lead back duties in denver and, and philip Lindsay will kind of be the change of pace guy there's a new regime in town no one has any allegiance to royce to uh philip Lindsay. um i'm a royce free i was a fan of royce freeman's game coming out and i think fan is going to want to pound the ball and that is what royce freeman brings in spades so i think he has low end running back to upside he, he's going to probably crack 200 plus carries this year for the Broncos. Yeah, uh, I'm not disagreeing 100% there, but I do think it's more closer to like a 50-50 split just to keep them both fresh. Uh, My breakout was your sleeper. I'm going with Deshaun Hamilton. Uh, I know, I mean, we've mentioned Sutton on the team and everyone's probably, well, it's Sutton's time. I really think with, you know, either quarterback, if it's Flacco or um, Locke, that they're both going to use Hamilton. And, uh, I mean, he's a great route runner. I've already seen it, and that is my breakout, John. So now we're on the bust. All right. There we and go. I'm, I'm going with Philip Lindsay. He didn't hold up last year. He got hurt. I, I don't think he made for it. I think they have more draft capital locked up in Freeman. I think they brought Riddick in, which means they're looking for more help at running back. Now that he's hurt, I think uh, – my man Devontae Booker will still have a role till uh, Riddick comes back on the field. And I think Lindsay over time will be the odd man out just due to injuries and being outperformed by some of the other guys. It looks like you agreed with Walker. Anything to add? No, I'm, I'm with him. And, you know, Riddick being signed there would have only doubled down on, on this for me. And even though he's hurt, 
you know, when he does come back, and he will, I mean, at some point, he's going to eat into more of what Philip Lindsay, I think, is going to do for this offense than Royce Freeman. And John's boys, Devontae Booker, is going to get a stay of execution until then, and his calling card is third down uh, as well. So I, I think that Phil Lindsay, just too many people eating off his plate um, for these new Denver Broncos that he's going to bust. I mean, he, he just doesn't – he's not going to hit those thresholds that he reached last year. I mean, he's not coming close. I mean, I might get shit for this, but it's time for me to go out on a limb. Uh, my bus, I mean, the athletic ability is there. You know, he got drafted early, earlier than the guy I just mentioned, but I just, I'm not seeing it with Cortland Sutton. I just don't think they have the tools to get him the ball where he is comfortable. And, uh, you know, hence Deshaun Hamilton as my breakout. So I'm going to go with Sutton. Walker, what is their record going to be? Before I go on the record, has anyone seen the fight between Desha, between uh, Emmanuel Sanders and Cortland Sutton? I have not. Neither have I. I they're, they're, if, if it happened, there's video, right? They're at training camp. There's, <laughs> there's video, right? If, 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 maybe it was in the locker room. Bullshit. I want to see it. <laughs> um, Denver Broncos, 3-13. and 13. I actually, wow. for the first uh, time in four divisions, looked at the records as well, John. Um, didn't go through the entire NFL, but looked at their team by teams and did a quick canvas, and it does not look pretty for the Broncos. I think they're at best the third best team in this division. Obviously, I think they're the fourth. <laughs> um, I just don't like where they're at on offense, and I think their defense is transitional. And Vic Fangio is unknown, although I like him as a D coordinator. How is he as a head coach? Uh, I'm going six and ten, uh, just because they do play at Mile High Stadium. That's a huge advantage, and they usually uh, squeak some wins out. Um, I could see them winning six out of the eight at home. I'm not saying they're winning any on the road, but uh, if they do, you know, maybe they lose three at home and win five on the road. But six and ten. Our opinions vary wildly on this team. I have them ten and six and making the playoffs. All right, well, listen, we're gonna we're gonna have to come back to this. Fascinating. <laughs> That's Mind blowing, but uh, let's go on down to Kansas City. Speaking of home field advantage, down at Arrowhead Stadium, uh, they made quite a few, you know, rookie splashes. These guys so far in the preseason are turning heads, and uh, I know one of you guys were high on them. But uh, Walker, why don't you talk about Mister uh, Miko Hardman for a second? Yeah, listen, Miko Hardman. I am not going anywhere on this kid. I just jet sweeped his way right back into my heart in preseason game one. That kid is, is fast, and they are bringing speed for days with these Chiefs. I'm excited to see what this offense can do with him, Tyree Kill, Sammy Watkins, Kelsey, the glow. Miko Harmon's just going to be a forgotten man in this offense, and he is going to have a few huge games this year. He is a best ball target, and he will be on my draft with Giants team. John, your boy, Darwin Thompson. Oh, don't get me started. Yeah, I'm a huge, huge fan. I, I hate when these guys I like have a good preseason game and then everybody else gets on them. I mean, most of my drafts are in the books, so I, I don't have to worry about getting sniped here. But it, it makes me kind of sick because then I, I, my my unreasonable love early in the year kind of gets phased out. It makes me a little upset. I mean, he to a point, we can go ahead and call Darwin the, the mini Minotaur because uh, his shirtless picks are, you know, all over the internet. And they're like, look at this guy. Are we so, got with a mini tar? Oh, <laughs> I like it. Nice play on words. Nice. <laughs> that was very good, Walk. Uh, we'll go to free agents. A uh, guy from Houston, Mr. Tyron Matthew, the honey badger, is – uh, now in KC, but uh, I don't think that helps their secondary too much. And then they added Frank Clark. You guys want to touch on that? There, there is no one with a domestic violence arrest that they will not sign. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> Jesus, it's true. Uh, okay, um, and then pay a boatload of money. You know yes. they they ship board out of town so they could bring in Frank Clark. They let uh, what's his name go? Justin Houston. This team is transitional. They do still have Chris Jones in the middle, but um. I, I don't have high hopes for this defense this year. Um, Tyron Matthew should be a good IDP play. He should step right into that Eric Berry role, but um, they're going to be in some shootouts in Arrowhead. Which is great for fantasy, yeah. The, the fact that this shoddy defense got arguably worse on paper is just great for fantasy. 
It's great for Pat Mahomes and any, uh, you know, wide receiver running backs. Well, that real quick. I mean, I just had to stop myself. Running back wise, <clears throat> it's still a mess. I mean, everyone was overdrafting Damian Williams. I would never even touch him. But I also don't think there's no one you can trust right now in that backfield. Am I, am I wrong there? I know who you can trust. The Athletics' Nate Taylor has left Carlos Hyde off his latest 53-man projection. But it was just the latest Roto World blur because Carlos Hyde's time and has come and gone in the NFL. He just doesn't have it anymore. It's Damian Williams' job. Darwin Thompson will be the backup and likely eventual starter for those Kansas City Chiefs. Darrell Williams will make the team. I could see Carlos Hyde getting cut. Once they cut him, if they do, John said something, maybe it was like seven months ago, that they're going to go grab fucking Charkandrick West off the streets and just bring him back. I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past me. I mean, it's, but Or they'll just go get LaShawn McCoy when he gets cut from Buffalo. <laughs> Very true. Reed reunion. Or Yeldon. They'll bring in Yeldon. That would be nice. Let's do that. Yes, please. Uh, I will. Oh, I will be very happy with that sleeper. Let's go ahead and let Walker get his out of the way. It's getting old. Yeah, I mean, only in a world such as Kansas City would Sammy Watkins still qualify as a sleeper. He was rocketing up draft boards while Tyree Kill was, you know, under a rock somewhere. And now that that situation is just somehow come and gone, it's a it's a thing of the past. Sammy Watkins is, is free falling again. I think a healthy Sammy Watkins, uh, you have to say that at this point in his career, still is a wide receiver too for fantasy purposes. He is going to have some boom games. I'm still getting Sammy Watkins where I can. And so I think he has sleeper appeal because people aren't treating him as such. If I had a poop poop drop, I would have dropped it right there. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Disgusting. Uh, I went with Byron Pringle. Stayed, stayed at wide receiver there. Pringle uh, was someone who they really liked last year, had a couple flashes in the preseason, then he uh, got hurt and pretty much missed a whole year. They kept him around, and, and he's looked pretty good in camp so far this year. I don't remember what he did in the first preseason game, but they, they've been ranting and raving about him. He's, you know, Most of the projections have him make on the team this year, and I think when he gets on the field, he outplays a lot of people like that bag of garbage, Sammy Watkins. Iron Pringle's not going to make this team. What? They, they hit him last year when he got hurt, but Demarcus Robinson's ahead of him. I mean, now that Tyreek Hill's back, I mean, he's a best or wide receiver for so he better play special teams. Dwayne Bow, but uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think they just signed him to a one day so he could retire as a chief or something like that. I mean, that might have been somebody else, but uh, it was. It was. My sleeper is going to be whoever. I mean, this is kind of a BS take, but is whoever's going to shake out of this running back situation by week one. It's pretty possible that you could own, you know, all three running backs, Darwin, uh, Williams and Hyde because they're not expensive. Maybe Williams being the highest. But uh, do you really want to take up that many roster spots? But whoever does come out of this alive, um, I think. uh will be my sleeper. Listen, you don't waste your pick on Carlos Hyde. So two picks is plenty to lock up the shoes. I didn't waste any picks. I got them for free. I have them everywhere, too, just hoping. (laughs) Drop them for free, too. Can't wait. Uh, There's always a chance. Never let go. Let's go to the breakouts. And uh, Oh, my gosh. Go ahead, Walk. I don't like you with the Chiefs. I'm just starting to look at – I mean, go ahead. Listen, I'm a nonconformist. You know, everyone is fading Damian Williams at this point. Everyone wants to hate him. Everyone wants to talk about how he's never, what's he had, like more than 50 carries in a season. It's like, you know, everyone just, it, it's 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 in vogue to hate Damian Williams and want to fade him. I'm buying breakout potential, even if it's just for one year. This dude is, he lit up that offense. Perfect fit in the Andy Reid offense. I don't care. He had a little hamstring injury, and Andy Reid threw a little cold water on him early on. If if he put together a, a whole solid season, no one would give a shit if Andy Reid was checking him in the preseason. But when it all shakes out, he is the type of back that succeeds in an Andy Reid offense. Carlos Hyde certainly is not, which is why I've always been off Carlos Hyde, because Carlos Hyde sucks catching the ball. Important part of what Andy Reid wants his running back to do. So Carlos Hyde was never threatening Damian Williams. Now, Darwin Thompson is a whole other story because, you know, we all love Darwin Thompson, but he's still a rookie, going to make mistakes. This team is Super Bowl or bust already, how they're constructed. And Damian Williams is going to be the running back to own in Kansas City. He will be an RB1 this year. 
You fade him all you want. You can draft him in the fourth. You can pass him in the fourth round if he's still sitting there, and you're going to come to regret it. Would it be politically incorrect for me to just say that Tyreek is going to break out again this year? Does that count? No. No. <laughs> to break out, you would have to say he's going to have like 1,600 yards and 18 touchdowns. That, that's how he breaks out. Okay. Mark it down. Go ahead, John. <laughs> <laughs> Call it. Uh, my my man Darwin Thompson, love him. Think he think he's gonna come out of the gate uh, a la Kareem Hunt esque whenever he gets his chance and uh, puts on a show for the remainder of the season. Looked good when he got his chance in uh, preseason week one, and I think that continues through the preseason until he is named the starter like week two. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go to the bus. Who you got, John? If I, if I like Darwin Thompson, I got to dislike somebody else, right? So Damian Williams, just like Walker mentioned, there's a reason this guy's career high was 50 carries. He's uh, he's not very good. Hard-hitting analysis there. I just blame Adam Gase. But um, Carlos Hyde was the was the layup punching bag I could have taken here at the, the bust because I don't think he even makes the team. I agree with whoever Nate Taylor is at the Athletic. But um, I went with Travis Kelsey because he's getting ready. And we all know I'm a late round tight end type guy. I I like Kelsey. Kelsey's great. Kelsey's the top tight end in football. I don't begrudge that. I'm not taking any tight end in the first three rounds, uh, especially in redraft. So you can have your Travis Kelsey's um, at, at his ADP. You know, it's just it's just not worth the risk for me. I mean, there's other guys you can uncover. We were talking about Chris Herndon on a previous podcast, and he's not Travis Kelsey, but you can piece together tight end in this in the league at this point. Hey, John, pass me that bat you just beat Walker with because I'm going to go with Sammy fucking Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 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 almost to the point of Devontae Parker. It's like we're all waiting. We want to see it. It's there. His athletic ability is there. But, I mean, I'm tired of waiting. I mean, as Tom Petty say, the waiting is the hardest part, but uh, I'm not waiting anymore unless it is best ball. That's the only place I would ever own Sammy Watkins from here on out. If you want him in Dynasty and you believe Watt, because he did bring up some good points, uh, he's going to be – he's pretty cheap right now. I mean, uh, especially with Tyreek coming back, I think his value rose quite a bit whenever uh, Tyreek was supposedly going to be suspended forever, but uh, that didn't work out. And now Sammy Watkins goes back to doing Sammy Watkins things, which is not very much. Let's go to records. 13 yep. and three. 13 and three. Wow. 11 and five. I was going 12 and four. So, <laughs> um, it looks like, well, I won't you know count our eggs before they hatch, but uh, it looks like they might be taking a division. No. No. <laughs> I've, oh. I've got them, yes. Okay. Oh, 13 to 3, they better win this division. <laughs> I mean, shit. The Raiders going 15 and 1. Hard knocks. But uh, let's go to the Chargers and just jump into the rookies. Uh, no big, huge names on the offensive side of the ball, really. But uh, Walker, what do you got? Anything? Yeah, they did nothing on offense. But Jerry Tillery um, at the tackle, uh, if you're playing a DT Premium League, I think was a value for those Chargers, especially with the two guys they have rushing off the edge. He should see some early career success. And then Nasir Adderley, um out of Delaware was someone who skyrocketed up draft boards. And uh, he's going to play opposite Derwin James. Um, so probably won't be as valuable as he's obviously going to be playing the free, but you know, I think it's a good move for them. It just bolsters uh, an already impressive defense. No, I had the same thing. Uh, Tillery was someone who was – I played a few DT premiums, and Tillery was – Tillery was dirt cheap. He, I was getting – you know, he's a first-round NFL pick, and I was getting him in the sixth round in some of these drafts. So he was a, a great value, and I, I think he's got tons of upside. And like you said, given who he's playing with – they're not going to be focused on stopping him from getting to the quarterback. So I think he can have sneaky value, especially like you said, year one. Um, they also took Drew Tranquil, who I think can help them at linebacker. But th- this team is pretty stacked on defense. And adding Tillery, Tranquil, and Adderley to a team that already had a good defense is pretty disgusting. So I'm looking for them to be pretty good on defense this year. Yeah, agreed. Um, I'm, I'm all in on the Chargers yet again as it seems to be every year when we do these episodes <laughs> as a closet Chargers fan. But all right, so we, we nailed rookies, Andrew, and it's on the defensive side, so no one wants to hear about that. So let's go to uh, free agents. 
And the only name that I had of note was undrafted free agent Jeremy Cox out of Old Dominion. And I was slightly aware of him before listening to the Roto Underworld where Matt Kelly was all in should Melvin Gordon be traded or refuse to play football because this kid is built like a lead back. And he was a 96 percentile spark X athlete, although he really didn't do shit at Old Dominion. So that's about where I'm at on Jeremy Cox is why not go pick him up for absolute free under the potential that it's not Eckler or Justin Jackson as the lead back down the line for those chargers. Right. But not much said. Tyrod I mean, Taylor. They also brought in Tyrod <laughs> Taylor. If you're looking to handcuff an old man Rivers. Phil Rivers does not miss football games. That is also true. Yeah, he's in that uh he's in that limo studying tape, but uh I think on the free agent thing is what they let go. Uh they let go of Tyrell Williams. It's just something to note. And uh all the Mike Williams touters are really going off on the hinge. Uh this is his year, so um we'll see you there. All right. It's time for our sleepers. Uh, go ahead, John. I went pretty deep here again. Uh, Artavis Scott is someone that I liked coming out of college. Was he a Clemson guy? I think. Uh, I believe you're correct. I remember, but uh, he kind of came out. I think last year and didn't do anything for undrafted, and then uh, he's been making a little noise in camp. Like you said, they lost Terrell Williams. They need some more depth at wide receiver. There's no reason why Scott can't end up being the wide receiver three on this team and especially what's going on at running back now, they, they may be pretty pass heavy. So he could bring you some sneaky value, especially for someone you're getting for free, super late in drafts. I'm just glad to see you guys. Clemson, right? He did no. say Clemson. Clemson, yeah, confirmed. And oddly enough, I had sleeper was the only thing I did not have filled out on a sheet. And before you started speaking, I wrote Artavis Scott. Nice. Artavis fist, Scott. Fist bump. <laughs> be the wide receiver three. I mean, no offense to Travis Benjamin, but – you know, that is a that's not an insurmountable depth chart to climb. And I did like Scott as well. He I don't think he ever got a fair shake with the Jets. I think he even got hurt and then probably caught an injury settlement. But he's been getting a lot of positive press um, as far as camp is concerned. So as far as sleepers, there's not a lot. Some of these teams are just they're all realized. I mean, I like Mike Williams with the dude at 10 touchdowns last year. He's not he's not sleepy anymore. And you might hate him, John, but he doesn't qualify for this category. So we're going Mark Davis Scott. Yeah. Mm, I'm not seeing much on the sleeper side besides the if Melvin holds out. Um, I do like Austin Eckler, but, you know, he's already known as well. Let's go to our – what are we on? Uh, breakouts? Break. Breakouts. It is finally Hunter Henry season. Antonio Gates kept this from us for the first couple of years, and then Henry decided he wanted to go and – tear his ACL in the preseason last year, but he came back, um, played in the playoff game. So I'm not at all worried about his rehab, where he's at in the process. If he was playing late last year, he is a hundred percent ready to go this year. There is nothing in his way to superstar him. He is a top five dynasty and redraft tight end all day. Get you some Hunter Henry. If I'm not mistaken, he might be the first person to ever do that. I mean, obviously he got hurt in training camp, but usually teams, even if they make the playoffs, don't put a guy back on the field, and uh, he did play. So Listen, they re-signed Antonio Gates. They were desperate. <laughs> they needed help. <laughs> Whenever he was ready, they were going to prop him up for 10 plays. John, you on the same page or you got somebody else? Nope. It's exact same thing. Hunter Henry for all the same reasons. All right, then- nothing, nothing new to add. <laughs> And it's time. I mean, these are few and far between. Uh, we usually do this during the regular season, but I'm sure this guy's about to get a bashing walk. Who are we bashing for our bus? Yeah. It's Melvin Gordon. This dude made it way too easy on me here with his holdout. That never ends well, even with a guy that's signing. I think it goes into the season because the Chargers are not going to pay him. They're offered this dude $10 million a year, and he reportedly wants significantly more than that. Running backs, it's just it, it. It's been proven with Gurley. Unfortunately, you can't pay the position. You just can't. You know, you, you're not giving long term. You're not giving high guaranteed money. You know, it's an injury riddle position. Gordon's hurt every fucking year. What is his argument to the Chargers for more than ten million dollars a year? I don't get it. And I'm all for players getting as much money as they as they want. But I would have ran to the table with pen in hand. I'd cut my finger and write it in blood. 
if you're offering me ten million dollars a year as a running back to play in the NFL. But he's going to hold out into a year. He's, he's He was getting hurt even if he didn't because that's what Melvin Gordon does. Now he's definitely getting hurt because he's not going to go through camp and know all that shit. And these guys always get hurt when they come in midseason. Melvin Gordon is just going to tank your team. If you were in like the Scott Fishbowl where you took him in the first round, congratulations. Yeah, you're, you're, a, you're a Fishbowl fan this year because your team's shot in the ass. Because Melvin Gordon is not going to return value. He screwed me last year in the Fishbowl. Never let it happen again. He's going to be a bust. Melvin Gordon... <laughs> probably won't play eight games this year. You brought up a good point about the Chargers not budging because they're not really known to negotiate or budge at all. I mean, Drew Brees, um, not that he was held out, he was injured and they shipped him, but uh, Vincent Jackson, they said F you, and then Vincent had to come back so he could get a little bit of money before he got shipped to Tampa. So that was a good point there. Uh, John, who's your bus? Yeah, I, I can't believe they even offered him $10 million, to be honest. And then it's crazy he didn't take it. Um I, he's the easy one, and I think he doesn't come back till week 10 because he has to come back to get his accrued season. So I think we'll see him week 10. I believe he holds out all year. Uh, but I went another direction since we know he's not playing. Uh, I went with Mike Williams, who I am a certified Mike Williams hater. A lot of his fantasy production was based off his touchdowns, and that was a product of Hunter Henry missing time with Henry coming back. I think he sees those touchdown totals decline a bunch, and I don't think Williams is capable of staying healthy. So I think Williams is going to be garbage this year. I wouldn't. That's who I wrote as my bust, but I wouldn't consider him garbage because, I mean, we we act like Hunter Henry is just going to be as healthy as ever. Um, It it is uh, depending on that if he busts or not. But it's also Keenan Allen, for some reason, is just not a big touchdown guy so that's what concerns me the most about calling mike williams a bust even though i i am it's just keenan allen not scoring touchdowns and not you know he's not a huge yak guy either and uh, mike williams you know he can he's a big enough body guy where he breaks tackle and takes it to the house so andrew um, you're already talking yourself out of that but i am I, 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 come on I, over to the other side mike williams will score 10 touchdowns again this year he's going to crack a thousand yards and he would be a top 24 wide receiver. I'm reluctantly calling Mike Williams my bus. You just, just called him your breakout, I think. I did. I did both right there. So uh, let's go ahead and go to records before I get even worse than I'm on Walker's team again. Um, go ahead and start him off, Walk. 11 and 5. I'm not, I'm not taking the cheese this year. I wanted to go higher. I really believe in these Chargers, but I'm still going 11 and 5. Same record as the Chiefs. Have them winning the division though. Ten and six. We're having this, this will be a fun division to see how this shakes out. I I really like the Chargers. I like them on paper. I really like them as a team. When I went through the season wins, they ended up six and ten for me, which was surprising. Oh, Jesus, you're on a roll today. Who did you surprising? You can you know you can just go back and alter it, right? You're, 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 I'm committed. I'm <laughs> committed. I did my records. He shoved all his chips in, and he is pot committed. So um, at least for two of us, we have the Chiefs winning. I think Walk is taking the Chargers. So let's uh, finish out with these uh, hard knock Oakland Raiders, the best for last, the most drama, uh, a few of Walker's guys in here. And uh, <laughs> go ahead and start with the, the rookies they brought in. Oh, uh-huh. just one. We don't need to talk about anything more than Josh fucking Jacobs. He is amazing. He is going to be awesome. He's an RB1. Immediately. Always happens with a rookie. He's the one. It's not going to be Miles Sanders because it's going to take him a little time to be realized. It's not going to be David Montgomery because Tariq Cohen is going to eat too much of that passing downs work. Josh Jacobs is going to be the top rookie running back this year. He is going to have 1,300 all-purpose yards and 10 touchdowns for these Raiders. John, anything to add on that? I mean, I, it's amazing. I have not been the world's biggest Jacobs supporter, but I cannot deny, you know, for fantasy, volume is king. He's already the, you know, atop their depth chart. There's no, there's nothing that's going to keep him off the field talent-wise behind him. So he may volume his way into some decent running back numbers. The only thing is this team's going to probably be shit. So they're going to be in a lot more passing situations and 
I, he may lose some volume because of that, but he's their lead running back and they're going to use him heavily. So I can't disagree with Walker's uh, love for Josh Jacobs. Go back and check Cadillac Williams stats when John Gruden used yeah. to pick on him. He will run this kid into the ground on his You're right. back. He's getting paid. He's a first round pick is running back, making a decent chunk of change. He is going to see the ball early and often in all situations. It's unfortunate because Jalen Richard is a good pass catcher. But that dude is irrelevant unless and until Josh Jacobs gets hurt. All right. Well, let's go to the free agents. We've already talked about Tyrell Williams coming over. And uh, everyone knows about old green feet Antonio Brown. Money uh, Brown. <laughs> he finally, uh, old trench foot, finally reported back to camp. And then he, he was crying about his helmet. Uh, the only guy that I kind of want to touch on, and we'll give the floor to John here because he was high on him before – being high on him was a thing is Keelan Doss, John. They added him in free agency because he was went undrafted. I didn't think of it in an undrafted angle as a free agent, but yes, you are correct. My man, Keelan Doss, I was hyping him up early in the off season and uh, I haven't seen it yet, but they, I think the most recent hard knocks featured him heavily. So I'm interested to check that out, but I, I think the kid's very talented. Uh, Gruden liked him at the senior bowl. He's been singing his praises during the off season, you know, he's got a few issues, obviously that's why he was an undrafted free agent, but uh, I think he can carve out a role here long-term for this team. I affectionately dubbed hard knocks episode two Keelan drops <laughs> because that dude dropped two of the easiest passes I've ever seen in human history on film. So whether you think he was featured positively, I would beg to disagree. And then he also made a comment to John Gruden about being a womanizer. So that goes affectionately in his favor as he talked about all the girls that he was not inviting to his first home game. <laughs> which, uh, which went undiscussed <laughs> on Hard Knock. But I was like, did he just say that? Yep, he just doubled down on it. Now well, he's just bringing his family to this one. I kind of looked at, uh, at the other side. Maybe I'm just um, – today it seems like I'm on Team John. But, uh, I mean, he did have those two that went right through his hands uh, that would get you on the bench in any league. Uh but in the preseason game, he performed pretty well, uh, caught a touchdown pass. So um, I think it's a – He tried not to score in the preseason. He did. But he tried his damnedest not to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that, that uh, from what I see, Gruden, you know, when he puts his eyes on a guy and falls in love, a.k.a. Uh, Nathan Peterman, uh, he, he's not going to let them go. And I think Doss makes the team – and uh, that's all you can do on this Raiders team. If you make the team, I think there's going to be a chance for opportunity um, aside uh, for that third wide receiver spot. So uh, that's where I'm at with Keelan Doss. Let's go to our sleepers. Um, I think we probably all might be unanimous on this, but go ahead, Walk, since you're the resident tight end guru. Yeah. I mean, listen, shout out to Christopher Bean, although he didn't totally uncover this guy. He wasn't slightly known commodity but respect he was he was touting them hard early on but Darren Waller you saw what Jared Cook was in that uh John Gruden led Raiders offense last year Darren Waller is even more athletic um as a converted wide receiver so he has all the sleeper potential in the world if he can put it together and I think he's dealing with an injury right now but he's already back practicing I think it's like an AC joint don't not not a doctor so could be totally wrong but he's back he is pretty much still free and all things being considered in, in most drafts, especially redraft. He's another guy. Maybe you take him early and you grab yourself a Chris Herndon late. You have some sneaky upside in the tight end room and you probably committed double digit draft capital on those two picks and can cobble together a high end tight end one between those two guys. I'm, I'm really excited to see what Darren Waller can do in this offense. I, I went back, back to the well with my man, Keelan Doss, but one uh, speaking <laughs> of Waller and just the tight end position, I don't think he's going to have much of a role this year, but we've talked about Foster and Moreau before. Mm -hmm. I think it was on the first uh, hard knocks. I saw Moreau and Derek Carr off to the side, chumming it up, being buddies, joking. Yep. I was like, yep. Ooh, that may well, be worth noting for down, yep. the, down, down the line here. So uh, i Again, not for this year, but I, I like him more, more than I already did coming into this. You know, it's funny. That's the reasoning for my uh, sleeper is because uh, this guy's actually making fun of Derek Carr, <laughs> and uh, they seem like their best buds. It's Hunter Renfro, old tiny hands himself. Uh, <laughs> Gruden, Gruden loves him as well. So, uh, I mean, I, 
like I said, with the same thing with Doss, I think him and Renfro are kind of in the same position to where it's pretty open when they go to that three wide receiver set. Um, even Tyrell Williams, I mean, one of these guys could outperform him, even though he's a veteran. So uh, I'm going to go with Renfro there. Let's go to the breakouts. We already know Walker wants to talk about Josh Jacobs again, so we're going to cut him off there, John, and you give yours. <laughs> Interesting fact, Hunter Renfro is older than Derek Carr already. Uh, <laughs> oh my god dude you can tell by the hairline though i mean that's not a lie uh breakout i just went with josh jacobs like i said i yes and and it's hard for me because i'm not even a fan but i, I can't deny the opportunity plus the volume it, it everything's lining up perfect for him no yep. if, you, if you were wondering what that crazy sound was in the background that was walker jumping up and down for joy when uh well, there's nothing better when John begrudgingly agrees with me. You know, when, when he just can't even f- figure out a way to make Josh Jacobs a bust, which he probably tried to do for days on end before this podcast. But uh, yeah, he's a breakout. He's the only one on this team that can break out. You know, and he- yeah, I don't know. I'm going to go somewhere else. Uh, I'm going to say a contract year. They're moving to Vegas. It's a big year. And uh, I'm going to take the easy one and go with Derek Carr. Breaks out again this year. He hasn't done shit in years. But uh, I think with Antonio Brown, if he does play or when he does, um, you don't really need too much chemistry with a wide receiver like Antonio Brown. The guy makes shit happen. It's going to make Derek Carr look head and shoulders better than what he has. I mean, they were bringing guys back like James Jones for years. I can't. I don't even want to go through the list of wide receivers he's been playing with. So I think just with the addition of Antonio Brown is going to, you know, do that much more dividends for Derek Carr. And I think he has a breakout year and gets to go to Vegas with the Raiders. So that'll be mine. Oh, I hope you're right because he is my QB two in the fishbowl. All right. Okay, let's go to the bus, and uh, this is pretty surprising, Walker. Yeah, I mean, it's a bus as far as, you know, the high water mark he's already achieved. And I didn't like Antonio Brown switching teams in the twilight of his career, going away from Big Ben, who would just pepper him with targets, would throw him into coverage, would just trust his receiver down deep. I don't think Derek Carr has that makeup, and I don't think he's just going to chuck it up for Antonio Brown on some of those 50-50 deep balls. His overall targets are going to regress. His boom touchdown upside, I think, is capped with Derek Carr as his quarterback. And I don't think he's going to be a wide receiver one this year. So that's why he's a bust for me. He perennially a guy that can be the wide receiver one, I don't think is a wide receiver one in 2019. I mean, we're still talking about one of the top five wide receivers in the game, though. I mean, I just can't. I, can't. I think new team plus Derek Carr plus 31 years old plus trench foot plus Weird helmet situation. Plus anything else you could just pile on to this fucking saga of Antonio Brown. Blonde mustache. Shit. That, yeah. Hot air balloon rides. Even more crazy haircuts. You know, this this guy is a, an insane asylum in a, a number 84 jersey. Uh, I'll save it for after the show. I was going to go somewhere with that. But uh, go ahead, John. I, I've got Antonio Brown, too. Uh, the few places I had him, I moved him early into the off season before it really started getting out of hand. And, uh, you know, looking back at those trades, I, I made out great. There's, I, I just think he's losing his mind. In addition to, to all the, everything Walker had mentioned, he's just a whack job and going crazy. He's in his, uh, what is he? 31 already. 31. So he's on the downward slope. I was able to get some first round picks so this year. I was able to get some of those, Mm, delicious 2020 first. So I'm I'm super happy moving him. Even if he does perform this year, what's he got left in the tank? Two years. So give me all the rookies I was able to get in exchange for him uh, before he started smoking spice and dyeing his mustache blonde. That spice will do some. He should have learned from Zay, but what can we do? What can you do? Let's go to the records. I'm sure there's going to be some big ones. Uh, go ahead, Dabari. One, one of my favorite quotes I saw somebody had put on uh, – I think it was Instagram or something for the Raiders was if you weren't with us, when we were four and 12. Don't be here when we're five and 11. And that's where I got him. Five and 11. <laughs> I was going six and 10. I got seven and nine. I'm, I'm believing a little bit in these Raiders. I think they have the offense to, uh, to put up some points. I think, the, I don't uh, think the defense is dog shit either. I think it's, it's largely unknown. 
but I think they can cobble together. I think they'll be respectable. I, I think I think the uh, hard knocks thing is like a curse. I mean, I watch it, you know, right when it comes out. It's like one of my favorite shows. Just to, you know, we we see these hype videos and whatnot and get excited. But I think that's as close as you can get to being inside of, you know, what goes on with an NFL team than being there at training camp and seeing it all go down. So uh, that's kind of why I, I thought they could squeak out six wins. But uh, if they weren't on hard knocks, I'd probably be in the four win range. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you went the other way with it. You gave them the hard knocks bump. I did. That's what I mean. It's like I start falling in love with the teams is, you know, when they're on hard knocks. I'm sorry if that came out the wrong way. But uh, yeah. And you listen, you guys were talking before I have to hang up on both of you. You were talking Hunter Henry, Hunter Renfro and Keelan Doss earlier. The only difference between the two is that Hunter Renfro is going to make this team. That's the only difference between these two. <laughs> Hurtful and unnecessary. <laughs> well, we're going to shut it down there with that last gut shot that Walk just gave John. And, uh, Next week, I th- hopefully we start off with the NFC East. It'd be nice. And so, so uh, Walker, can start that, to- that works. We're uh, confident. Uh, he can start to punch me a little <laughs> bit, but uh, I guess we'll save that for the good stuff. Okay. Well, thanks again to our partners over at the Full Time Fantasy Network. Uh, make sure to like, rate, and subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, Spreaker. Gosh, I feel so weird when I say that, but everywhere. So for myself, Andrew Burke, John Dabari, Matt Walker, we're the Fantasy 40, and we are signing off.